What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to start to learn to build GUI apps with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to learn to build GUI apps with PyQt5. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to learn PyQt5. Now, this is something people have been asking me to talk about for many, many months, so we're going to start doing that now. So from now on, every Thursday, it's going to be PyQt Thursday. Doesn't really have a very good ring to it, but that's what we're going to do. PyQt Thursdays. And today, we're just going to install PyQt5, and we're going to build this very basic app. It says, hello world, what's your name? And type in John. Click the button, hello John, right? So just a very basic app just to get us rolling here and uh, get this all installed and stuff. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm using the git bash terminal and the sublime text editor as always. And I've just got the git bash terminal open. And the first thing we want to do is create a directory to hold all of our cool PyQt5 uh, files we're going to be building in the future. So let's go mkdir and I want to put this in my C drive and I'm just going to call this PyQt5. All right, so now we can cd change directories to move into that directory. And so let's go up C slash pi QT5. Okay, and you can see now we're in this directory. If we type in LS, there's nothing in there yet. So the first thing you wanna do when working with any sort of Python project is create a virtual environment. And a virtual environment is a little walled garden where you can install all the things that you're gonna be using in your project. In our case, pi QT5. So to do that, we type in Python dash M V-E-N-V -E stands for virtual environment, and then just name this thing. And I usually call this vert, really doesn't matter. And it takes a second to spin up, and boom, there we go. Now we type ls, we see we have this vert directory. So we've installed our virtual environment, now we need to turn it on. And to do that, we just type in source, and then vert, scripts, and then activate. And you can see, boom, this little vert thing is on top of our command prompt. That means our virtual environment has been turned on. We can turn it off if we want by typing deactivate, and now it's gone again, and we can bring it back by that same command. Now, if you are on a Mac, I think the command is source, maybe bin activate, something like that, or source, maybe slash bin activate, or source vert bin activate, something like that. If you're on Mac or Linux, that should do the trick. So, okay, so now there's still nothing in here but our virtual environment directory. And the first thing we wanna do is pip install PyQt5. So we just go uh, PyQt5. And notice capital P and capital Q. Not really sure if you have to do that, but I think you do. So, all right. Okay, so now we can go pip freeze. And we can see that PyQt5 version 5.15.2 and PyQt5 SIP 12.8.1 have been installed. If these numbers are different by the time you watch this video, no big deal. Just whatever the current version is, go ahead and use that. It should be okay unless there's like a major version upgrade to PyQt6 or something, but I don't see that happening in the immediate future, so we should be good to go. So, okay, we've got PyQt5 installed in our computer, and it was just that easy to install it. Super, super easy. So let's create a file. I'm gonna call it um, hello.py, and we can use the touch command, or we can open up our Sublime te Text Editor and do it that way. I'm here, so I'll just do it like this. Now we type in ls, we see we have this file. It's a blank file, but it now at least exists. So let's head over to our Sublime Text Editor. And now in the future, we're gonna use the PyQt5 designer thing to make apps. But for this video, we're just gonna start building out a regular PyQt5 Python file. We're gonna do all the code ourselves. It's not much to it, so uh, it shouldn't take us very long. So let's open that file we just created. So I'm gonna to go to our my C drive, and I'm gonna find that PyQt5 directory we created. There we go, and there it is, hello.py. And it pops right up. So the first thing we need to do is import PyQt5. So to do that, there's lots of different ways. But I'm gonna do it this way, where we're gonna go import PyQt5.qt widgets as QTW, right? So I do a lot of videos on Kinter, and you know, with Kinter we do things with widgets. Everything's a widget. And it's sort of the same way with PyQt5. There's widgets, and we need to import the widget stuff from PyQt5. We don't wanna just import everything from PyQt. We just need the widgets right now, so we'll do that. I'm importing it as QTW. It's a sort of normal convention to do that, and you'll see why in just a minute. So, okay, 
We can go ahead and save this and run it if we want, just to make sure this imported okay, since this is sort of a new thing. So we can go Python hello.py, it runs, no errors, we're good to go. So PyQt, you really want to use classes for this. I know with a lot of my Kinter videos, we don't use classes all that often because you can get away without using classes in Kinter, and classes tend to confuse people, especially newer coders. So I don't use them that much in Kinter, but with PyQt, we really need to. So to do that, let's create our first class here, and I'm just going to call this main window. And we want to pass in qtw Q widget. Now, I know we're pulling QT widgets here, but this is singular, so sort of make note of that. And now we need a define underscore underscore in it, underscore underscore, or dunder if you want to say that, I'm like a weirdo. <laughs> That's what people call that, dunder, double underscore. I just call it underscore underscore. And we need to call super dot underscore underscore in it, underscore underscore. And I'm not going to get into a whole lot of what this stuff is, it's just basic class initialization stuff, right? Okay, and then we also need self dot show, right? Now this will show our app when we start the thing. So okay, that's our main class. Now to actually run the thing, we need to create an instance of an app. So let's go app equals, and this is going to be qtw dot q application. And inside of here, we need to pass an empty Python list. Maybe we'll talk about why later. It's not super important right now. And we also need to sort of initialize our main window up here. So I'm just going to call this MW for main window and set this equal to main window. And then finally, to run the app, we need to execute it. So let's go app dot execute. And then this, we need to use this underscore because exec is a special keyword in Python. So it needs to sort of change a little bit. So we stick an underscore after it. And that should do the trick. So 15 lines of code, well, and some spaces, but uh, not much to create a basic app. So let's run this and see if this worked. And this should just give us a blank window, basically. So we can go Python, hello.py. And when we do, we get this black blank window. Nothing much going on here, but it seems to work. So it says Python up here for the title. So let's go ahead and really quickly change the title. That's super easy to do. Inside of our class here, let's add a title. And to do that, we just call self dot set window title, and then just say whatever we want. So I'm going to go hello world. All right, so notice the W and the T are both capitalized here. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Very exciting. <laughs> so we get the same blank window, but now it says hello world for the title bar here. And we're moving right along. So okay, now we need to set a layout. So let's set layout. So with Kinter, there's like pack and grid. There are several layouts you can use with PyQt5. I'm just going to call it PyQt. I'm tired of saying five after the end of it. So there's several layouts you could use with PyQt. There's a vertical box layout, a horizontal bo box layout. There's a grid layout. We'll look at that in a little bit. For now, we're just going to use the vertical box layout. So up and down in a boxy sort of thing, sort of like the box layout in Kivi, where it's just one thing after another vertical. So to do that, we go self dot set layout. And you're, you might be starting to see uh, sort of a, a pattern here. The first thing is lowercase. And the second thing is uppercase, like lowercase, uppercase, uppercase, that sort of seems to be a theme. So just sort of keep that in mind. And then we want qtw dot. Now this is going to be a qv box layout. And that's a function. And you notice this QTW, we're doing that for everything as well. Here, here, uh, right here. That's because we imported PyQt5 as QTW. So we have to stick this QTW in front of everything we want to do. So that's why that's happening. So, okay, that will set the layout. This is the vertical box layout. If you want the horizontal box layout, it's H box layout, right? But we want the V. So let's set uh, vertical layout, let's say. Okay, so that's good. Now let's create a label. Let's create a label, just a basic label. And I'm gonna call this minor score label, call it really anything you want. And this is gonna equal a QTW dot Q label. And here's another thing you might be noticing, we're slapping Q's in front of everything, Q, Q, uh, Q, right, Q. That's uh, another sort of quirky thing of PyQt. So sort of keep that in mind. 
And uh, here's our label. We can put anything we want. Let's just put hello world. Woohoo. Now we've created this. We also need to sort of put it on the screen. So let's go self dot layout and then dot add widget. And what do we want to add? We want to add my underscore label, right? Again, notice this lowercase uppercase convention going on. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how this looks. And boy, I can barely grab it. Let me just do it like this. There we go. And you can see very tiny, it says, hello world. And we can sort of resize this and it kind of moves around a little bit. Labels don't resize especially well. Buttons do a little bit better, but uh, yeah, that's, it's a label, right? So we've got something on the screen. So if we wanna change the size of the label, this is a little bit weird. This is not really a property of widgets. Even though the label is a widget, changing the font of the label is not. It's part of the GUI system. So we need to import that if we wanna use it. So let's go import pi qt5 dot qt GUI as, and let's name this something. Let's just go, I don't know, QTG for QT GUI. All right, this is QTW for QT widgets. So now we can use this. So let's come down here and change the font size of label. So let's go and actually maybe, I'm gonna go ahead and put this first and then we'll add it to the screen after we've changed the font. So let's go my underscore label dot set font. And again, lowercase s, uppercase f, right? And then we wanna call qtg dot q font. And now what do we wanna do? Well, let's use our trusty Helvetica and let's make this like size 18 or so. And that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save it, run it again, boom. And now our text is bigger. So, okay, looking good. So what do we wanna do now? Let's add a button or let's add an entry box so that we can enter a name. So first I wanna change this from hello world to, I don't know, hello world, what's your name, <laughs> right? So now let's create uh, a box or let's call it an entry box. That's not what it's called, but that's what I'm gonna call it. An entry box that we can type into, right? So I'm gonna call this my underscore entry, and this is going to be a QTW dot Q line edit, right? So this is a Q line edit widget, I guess, not an entry box, but entry box in my mind makes more sense. So I'm gonna call it an entry box. So let's go my underscore entry dot set object name and I'm just gonna call this name or name field, whatever. So we need to set an object name because we need to reference this entry box later on. So, okay, and we don't have to do this, but we can set the my underscore entry. We can go set text and we can set the text to anything we want. So if you wanted placeholder text, you could type that in there. I don't really want any placeholder text, so I'm just gonna leave it blank. You don't have to add this at all. It's just kind of interesting and it'll come up later. So I thought I'd put it in there so we could see it. So let's go ahead and slap this guy onto the screen and we do it the same way we did with our label. So I can just copy this. And instead of my label here, we want to put on the screen my underscore entry. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And boom, now it says, hello world, what's your name? We've got a little box here. And if we resize this, it kind of, resizes as well. It's kind of interesting. The label doesn't, but the box does. So, okay, that's cool. And finally, now let's create a button. So create a button. And this is a very basic app, but uh, you know, we're getting some stuff up on the screen and we're seeing that, hey, this is really easy to do and really quickly to make something. And that's kind of cool. So uh, let's call this my underscore button because I have all the original names. And let's go QTW dot Q push button. So buttons in PyQT are called push buttons, right? <laughs> and uh, so now we can say, I don't know, press me. And that'll be all for now.
let's just get this up on the screen. So to add it to the screen, as always, we just call this guy right here. So I'm just gonna copy this again and boom. And this is gonna be under my button. Okay, so let's save this and run it. Just to make sure that looks good. And okay, we've got a button here. It kind of glows when we hover over it. When we press it, it kind of does a thing. We can resize and it, it resizes. The label still doesn't, but uh, everything else does. And okay, pretty cool. Now this doesn't actually do anything yet. So to actually do something, it's not that tricky. We just come up to our my button here and we slap a comma in there. And let me put this on another line. And whenever the button is clicked, we need to call clicked and set that equal to, and now here we're gonna use a Lambda. And we've done this sort of thing with Kinter, we call L-A-M-B-D-A. And as soon as I do that, this looks like an uppercase L. It is not, it's still lowercase. I don't know why Sublime does that, but it does it here too. So this is lowercase L, just keep that in mind. And let's have this call a function called press underscore it. And we haven't created that just yet, so we will do that now. And we need to do it below here. So let me just slap a comment in here, show the app. And this is really important. Don't forget to put this self.show on here because if you do, your app won't show. It'll sort of be there in the background running, but it won't be showed and the terminal will sort of freeze. So make sure you always have that. So let's define press it. And now what we wanna do is take whatever is in the box and put it on the label. So we can change the label. We did it up here. Uh, to, to, to where to go right here, my entry dot set text. We could do that same thing with the label. So we could go my underscore label dot set text. And inside of here, I'm gonna create an F string and I'm gonna say hello and then we can pass in whatever we want. Well, what do we want? We want whatever's in the my entry box. So my entry dot text like that. I'll put an exclamation point on there. Now, we probably also want to delete whatever is in the box after somebody clicks the button. So if they wanna type something else later, it'll be nice and empty for them. So we can do the same thing we did up here. Let's just kind of copy this and paste that in and that should do the trick. So let's uh, clear the entry box. And here, let's uh, add name to label. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. So we get, hello world, what's your name? We could type in John, we could click the button, press me, boom, hello John. And it's just that easy. So that's PyQT in a very quick nutshell. Pretty simple to do, you know, very basic things and there's not a whole lot to it. And it's, uh, you know, kind of cool. So like I said, in the future, we'll be looking at the PyQT designer and doing all that stuff. We'll also get into all of this in more detail. So Thursdays from now on, PyQT Thursdays should be a lot of fun and uh, looking forward to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership so page. It's $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.